Hi, I'm Scott Pearson, and like you, I'm wild about Washington. As nature transforms Mount St. Helens, an elk herd has taken up residence in the area. There are problems as flooding and shifts in the river take away much of the winter habitat. There is a project underway to reinforce some of the riverbank to allow a more reliable source of winter food to take root. We're standing on part of the original mud flow from 1980, and uh, since the floods in 1996, the river uh, during that year eroded about uh, three to four hundred acres here, and since that time we've struggled to stabilize uh, what was left of the original mud flow, which is critical elk habitat uh, during the winter time for elk here. And uh, in order to accomplish that uh, in the long term, what we need to do, do is uh, get vegetation established, build a root mass, and a riparian zone that will keep the river in, in, a, in a stable uh, condition. Uh, in December, um, we uh, were able to get our first uh, major stabilization project in place. It was a partnership with the, De the Department of Ecology, uh, the Kalitz Tribe, and the Lower Columbia Fish Enhancement Group. And basically, the project's going to uh, help protect about a thousand feet of the bank of the mud flow along the Toodle River from erosion and also build up material behind it that will be a plantable area for elk habitat and riparian habitat as well. Well, so far, I would call the project a success. Um, we did nudge the river away from the eroding bank, and the, the uh, three pile dikes that were constructed are accumulating material behind them, uh, which is going to be a real good plantable area this spring. The result for elk uh, is more secure, stable habitat, and uh, also hopefully um, over a by next year we'll have a little bit better forage availability, at least in a small area and uh, we can be a little bit more assured that uh, the most important part of their winter range is, is being protected. Under uh, pretty significant winter conditions, uh, the slopes from the wildlife area go up rather steeply, and this is where they end up when they come down the hill. If there's no forage available to them here, there's not too many other places that they can go. Well, we do have uh, a grant from the Recreation and Conservation Office that's going to allow us uh, to expand on this first project and take it further upstream. And uh, by the time that project is done, we're hoping to uh, uh, have a stable area um, along the bank of a, probably about 50 acres or so uh, where we'll be able to expand the winter range habitat. In the longer term, a more stable river channel means that uh, habitat out on the, the gravel bars out here can begin to recover naturally, and there may be some areas where we might be able to do some planting, too. The past several years, most of our plantings have been limited to the eroding bank areas, and they've been pretty successful. The problem is um, we haven't had enough time for the trees and shrubs to really mature enough to hold the bank. These structures that we put in place, uh, we hope will give those trees enough time to mature and do their job. Well, we do have a new plan for the Mount St. Helens elk herd, which is actually to reduce the population uh, to bring it more into balance with its available habitat. At the same time, we want to try to improve habitat not only on our own properties, but if we can on uh, private uh, properties, commercial timberlands. And uh, it's not just in this valley. Um, it's in a much broader area that's been influenced by um, different management of forests, uh, suburban developments, elk are losing their habitat in the St. Helens Range to a lot of ways. It's a time of year when snow geese visit the Skagit River Valley, as do the people who want to see them. The Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife encourages wildlife viewers to do their viewing in such a way that the lives of the birds and the local residents are not disturbed. Snow geese that visit the Skagit Valley come from uh, the Russian Siberian area. They come a long way to winter here and on the Fraser Delta. Uh, ordinarily, the population would be between 40 and 50,000. That would be normal for us. This year, we have over 103,000 birds. We encourage people to come up and enjoy snow geese and snow goose viewing. What we uh, do encourage also is that they remember that 
these birds are sensitive to disturbance and that there are other issues uh, associated with wildlife viewing and that is respecting the landowners and to be aware that uh, when they're on busy highways and along busy roads uh, there is a safety issue. People can uh, cannot get off on the ro off the roads in certain areas. They are are in dangerous situations, and we encourage people to recognize that uh, getting off the road is important, and that they need that they need to be aware of the traffic around them. Being aware of the needs of the local landowners is also very important. Uh, local landowners uh, go about their business. Many of the people come to, come up to watch birds. Uh, park in private driveways and uh, do trespass on private lands. And we encourage bird watchers to be particularly sensitive to the needs of local landowners and local farmers. It's something you can do if you want to start out enjoying wildlife, especially birding, is to invest in a good pair of binoculars. This will allow you to enjoy wildlife and to be able to identify what you're looking at at a distance without getting too close. Another thing you can do is use your vehicle as a blind and get a, a spotting scope with a window mount and view wildlife from, from the vehicle without getting out and disturbing the animals. But you have to keep in mind when you're out enjoying wildlife in their natural habitat that they are trying to make a living and they have to spend their time finding food and sleeping and all of the things that they need to do to survive. And any time you disturb uh, wildlife, you may be costing them in terms of the energy that they need. So it's really important that you be mindful of this when you're out there and try to uh, minimize the amount of disturbance to wildlife. There's many hundreds of thousands of people that come to the Skagit Valley every year to interact with snow geese and wildlife in general. And it's important that uh, the educational process inform these folks of what they can do, what they're seeing, where they can go to enjoy wildlife, and uh, what they need to do to be safe and to be respectful of private landowners. Here are some places you can see some of Washington's wildlife. If you want your fishing to be a challenge, it doesn't get any more challenging than going after winter steelhead. It takes skill, knowledge, and patience. Add some luck and you'll have a fishing experience long remembered. Today we're going to fish for winter steelhead in uh, western Washington. This is the Wainuchi River behind me and uh, we're going to use a variety of methods. We're going to fish out of the drift boat and we're going to use, uh, oh, we're going to pull some plugs these are uh, just a standard plug. Um, there's a variety, di many varieties to choose from. Uh, I don't know if any work better than others, but um, we have a variety to choose from. Um, we're also going to use some drifting gear. We've got standard drift gear, corky, and a, and a piece of pencil lead setup. Um, we'll probably tip these with both sand shrimp and uh, some eggs. And uh, we'll drift down the river and uh, see if we can pick up some winter steelhead.
So today we're going to be targeting hatchery steelhead. Hatchery steelhead uh, may be harvested up to two per day per person. Hatchery steelhead are identified by the removal of the adipose fin. Um, all wild, hatch wild steelhead must be released. We're going to primarily be fish fishing out of the drift boat today, but um, there's a lot of opportunity to fish off the shore. Also larger jet boats you'll see are on the river as well. Well, we ended up the day with uh, landed two fish, um, lost a couple more, so it wasn't a, it wasn't a great day, but it was a good day of fishing. We caught a couple of fish. You can find out what res what is open for fishing through uh, the pamphlet, fishing pamphlet, or you can also find out on our website. Steelhead are kind of uh, perceived by some people as uh, pretty challenging fish to catch. Uh, sometimes you might have to pay your dues for a while before you actually see some success. Um, I guess my advice is stick with it. Pay attention to what you see on the water. Pay attention to conditions, uh, um, and maybe maybe take uh, some good notes and remember what you see when you have success, and and try to uh, you know, duplicate that in the future. Here are other fishing opportunities in Washington. This has been Wild About Washington, brought to you by the employees of the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife. Working together, we can keep Washington's outdoor heritage for future generations. Thank you for watching.